Let's take a few minutes to check out the partial invisibility feature of Doom. I've been searching the web for the last weeks to find something odd in the game to add to my series of bugs and quirks here on YouTube. This time, however, it doesn't take more than a regular Doom game and its invisibility effect. There are three very minor quirks regarding the invisible feature of Doom. There's no P-Word required, everything we need is in the code. It doesn't take much time, nor it is difficult to pull off. All we need is a classic Doom engine, no matter if Doom 1 or Doom 2, and an invisibility pickup. But what is the fuzz effect? The fuzz effect is often used to describe the invisible effect in general. It is actually just a part of it. First, there's a graphical change, and a pretty nice one if you ask me. Instead of drawing the pixel data, which means the bitmap of the sprite, it rather takes and copies the pixel from behind. Only a vague shape is left. The actual fuzz effect copies nearby pixels and moves them in a fixed pattern to achieve this visual flow effect. From what I've read, the stippling effect may be unintended and considered a bug, but it's cool looking, so who cares? And last but not least, there is a color map treatment. This step is shifting down the brightness of the current color by a few shades, for example light green will become dark green and so on. The invisibility feature will vanish when it comes to pixels that are already in a darkened color range. It can't get more dark than pitch black, right? The Spectres are the only vanilla Doom monsters that are using this effect. As you can see, the lower the brightness, the less visible the objects get. If you watch carefully or take a screenshot or slow down the video, you can see some of the pixels are bleeding down quite a distance. This can be seen in the 2 of 256. This will be exaggerated later in the video by abusing a Hall of Mirror. Apart from the visual effects, Doom's Hellspawn will also experience a big loss of accuracy. Unlike in many other games which turn you invisible to your opponents, in Doom it is really just a partial invisibility. Before picking up the power-up, at least one of the Mancubus Fireball is at perfect aim. After picking it up, the aim is sometimes ridiculously off. Technically, the engine can render every object invisible, including medikits and magazines, as seen here. Okay, enough theory now, let's discover the little quirks in game. Number one, the vertical cutoff. You probably never realized that, uh, I knew that it, well nobody did, at least nobody who's actually playing the game instead of gluing the eyes on the screen, but when becoming invisible there is a row of empty pixels between your weapon sprite and the screen border or the status bar respectively. It is more notable with reduced resolutions because the pixels get bigger, including that nasty row of nothing. As already said, the fuzz effect treats nearby pixels. To avoid it trying to use pixels from the top or the bottom, there is a vertical cutoff. Results could be the game showing pixel garbage or crashing with invalid memory excesses. It can be best seen when it flashes back and forth at the end of the effect's duration. I personally call it the safety pixels. Number 2. The fuzz effect bleeds or transports colors. Well, this one can never be seen during normal gameplay, but I think it's okay to show here because it explains the fuzz effect a little bit better. Depending on the size and shape, each weapon has a different flow to it. If we clip ourselves out of the map now, the Hall of Mirror effects happen. Popping the menu, you can clearly see a little red tint from the G of the word game surrounding the letter. The engine takes the adjacent pixels as stated before. The double barrel shotgun has a float that is not suitable for my experiment. It's like very resistant to what I want to show. The pistol, however, has a different flow. It goes downwards in its idle state. Because the engine takes nearby pixels, it picks up the red ones and darkens it to a solid mass of dark red. 
Because this continues forever, it is slowly bleeding down the entire weapon sprite. However, the idle sprite and the firing sprite have different shapes, the flow table is different and changes the flow upwards, clearing the red area with nearby grey pixels eventually, but now transporting the red pixels towards the pistol's tip. Also nice to see how the color map treatment turns the weapon from the bright grey background to a solid dark grey shade. And now, finally something you probably have noticed since the game has been out. The abnormal fuzz effect with certain shapes. As just mentioned, each weapon has a flow to it, depending on size and shape. One of the weapons in the Doomguy's armory is a special snowflake though. It doesn't happen when playing in full screen or the status by enabled, but which one is it and what does it do? Is it you? Or you? Or even you? Well, there's no point in hiding, as Wesker from Resident Evil says, all it takes is the push of a single key to change the screen size. Suddenly, you can see it's the regular shotgun in its shape that behaves different. The direction and speed of the flow changes, or even fully stops. When firing the weapon, the shape is different and the fuzz effect starts working again until it goes back to the weird idle mode. But not only Vanilla Doom is affected. Modern source ports with mouse support and whatnot cap this behavior, including the row of safety pixels at the bottom. Some have implemented different ways of the invisibility effect, others try to recreate it. Well, I just suspect all of them to copy from the source code because they are lazy. I I'm kidding, I'm kidding, no angry emails, please. <laughs> Doom is a great game. John Carmack and his buddies did an excellent job. But sometimes it just takes a single keystroke to reveal the trick behind.